in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation, and it's great to be with all of you. I'm Father Ed Broom, OMV, Oblate of the Virgin Mary, and your host. We'd like to always begin our conversation by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary has many titles. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. And Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. Also, when we pray the, the Hail Holy Queen, we invoke Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's, you, let's unite our hearts, our minds, our souls, our family in praying the prayer that Mary really loves most. And that prayer is the Hail Mary. So together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Next, my friends, let's uh, invite to be with us our spiritual director. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has many wonderful titles. The Holy Spirit is known as the paraclete. The Holy Spirit is the sweet guest of the soul. Holy Spirit also is our sanctifier. Holy Spirit is our consoler, as well as our counselor. The Holy Spirit is also known as the interior master or teacher. St. Paul reminds us in these words. He says that we really don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so that we can say Abba. Abba, which means daddy or father. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds with the light of his truth and also to set our hearts on fire with the love of God. As we pray the classical prayer to the Holy Spirit together. Come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise
and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady Guadalupe, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. St. Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. How true it is, my friends, the family that prays together stays together. The family that prays together stays together. And a world at prayer is a world at peace. To give you encouragement, as always, I will be praying for all of you and placing you on the altar in the holy sacrifice of the Mass that I celebrate every day. There's no greater prayer in the world than the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And I'll be offering the following intentions as I place you on the altar. Number one, I'd like to pray that all of us would be open to the inspirations of the, of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps this can be our prayer today. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. My next intention, I'd like to pray for our families. For our conversion, our sanctification, and our salvation, also meaning our perseverance and grace, that we would persevere until the end in the grace of God and the love of Christ, so that we will be saved. Jesus uh, himself said, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul in the process? What can we ch exchange for the salvation of our souls? My last intention, as always, invite all of you to pray in a special way. Pray in a special way for the the dying. Today people will be dying. How many of them are really prepared? Perhaps not, not all of them. Perhaps not the majority of them. Let's pray for the dying that they will open up their hearts to God's mercy and be saved. Those are my intentions, my friend.
Before moving on to our topic for today, I'd like to just make a summary of the the presentation I gave last night. As you know, last week we gave a five-day, we call it a mini-retreat, on the letter of St. James. St. James has five chapters. So last night he presented to the people St. James chapter 3. And you can go to um, Facebook as well as my YouTube and listen to my presentation last night, which I talked about James chapter 3, which are the sins of the tongue. The sins that we commit in our speech. And St. James challenges us to Think before we speak. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. Says the man that does not fail in his speech is a perfect man. And I define the purpose of speech as such. The purpose of speech, our speaking, is to communicate the truth with love. Do you like that? It's a good definition, isn't it? We speak to communicate the truth. And to communicate the truth with love. In the presentation, we said that with respect to our conversation, we have to learn when to speak. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a time for everything underneath the sun. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's a time to plant. And there's a time to gather. There's a time for peace. There's a time for war. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to weep. There's a time for everything underneath the sun. And that means there's a time to speak and there's a time to be silent. So in our communication, we have to learn when to speak, when to be silent and to listen. We have to know to whom we should be speaking and to others who we should maybe not speak at all. We should also Pray for the grace to know what words to say, what ideas to convey. And then even of capital importance would be even the tone of our voice sometimes happens that mothers are telling their chill children to do something, but with a high, shrill, loud voice. So they're communicating the truth, but with anger. And that can be self-defeating. And uh, one last idea in speech, and then we'll move into the biblical readings for today. What I'm going to convey to you is taken from the 
writings and the teachings of the great St. Augustine, whose feast day we celebrated earlier this week, known as the Doctor of Grace. St. Augustine says this, If you meditate upon the Word of God, the Word of God, the Bible, that you're meditating upon goes from the page of the Bible to your eyes, and then it goes to your mind. Then it sinks down into your heart. Then you open up your mouth and you speak, and those words vibrate and they go from your heart, your mouth, your lips. They go from you into your friend, what I'm doing now. Then it goes from your ears into your mind, and then it sinks down into your heart. So the word of God that I've meditated upon in my holy hour is still in my heart, but I've shared it with you, and now it's in your heart. Isn't that beautiful? And I think we should all be aiming at that, to meditate daily on the word of God. to ponder the Word of God in our minds, to ruminate on the Word of God in our hearts, then not to, sh not to keep it to ourselves, but to share it with the whole world. If I give something monetarily, I become more poor. But when I'm sharing my wisdom, communicating the truth and love, I'm not becoming impoverished by giving to you, but I'm becoming all the more enriched. And then the handout, I wrote an article on the sins of the tongue. I emphasize the fact that we see in the apostles before Pentecost, during and after Pentecost, a radical change. Peter denied our Lord with the tongue, Holy Thursday night. But after he made that Pentecost experience, which he was praying with Mary and the apostles and fasting, and in silence for nine days and nine nights. When Peter gets up, and preaches, after the descent of the Holy Spirit, his words were so eloquent, anointed, and powerful, that the people were stung to the heart. And they said, what should we do? And Peter says, repent of your sins and be baptized. 3,000 converts. 3,000 people asked to be baptized as a result of the preaching of St. Peter. You see the power of the word of God. We want our words to influence people in a very positive way. We want our words to draw people closer to Christ, who is the Logos, the Word of God, made flesh. So there we have it. One idea taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians One idea, St. Paul says, What thanksgiving then can we render to God 
My friends, we should never allow a day in our lives to transpire in which we do not thank God for his blessings, for his benefits, for his providence. To never allow a day to go by in which we fail to thank God. In the words of the psalmist, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. To get today, let's thank God for the fact that all of us have a Heavenly Mother, Mary Most Holy. My friends, tomorrow we enter into the month of September in which there are several Marian feast days. September 8th, we celebrate the birthday of Mary. September 12th, we celebrate the titular feast day of the Oblates of the Virgin Mary, which is the holy name of Mary. September 15th, we celebrate Our Lady of Sorrows. So right off the bat in September, we're going to have these Marian feast days. Let's thank God. For sending us Mary. She is truly the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. And Mary is our mother. And as we pray in the Hail Holy Queen, Mary is our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Mary is our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So, my friends, let's move from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians to the Gospel, the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 24. And the essential message for today is to, Jesus says, stay awake, be vigilant, for we do not know on which day the Lord will come. So let's talk about that topic. Stay awake, pray, be vigilant, because we know neither the day nor the hour. Jesus will go on to say that he will come like a thief in the night. This stay awake and pray, be alert, can be fleshed out by a sentinel or a, or a um, soldier on guard having his eyes open and being alert for the approaching and the encroachment of the enemy. That's right. If the soldiers are aware that the enemy could be coming and attacking at any moment, the sentinel, the guard, has to be constantly on watch, vigilant. In our spiritual life, I think we can interpret it in two ways. We have to be vigilant, alert, awake for the temptation of the devil. And the second interpretation is we have to be vigilant and alert 
and be ready for the day, the hour, the moment that, that God will call us from this life to the next. We know neither the day, nor the hour, nor the minute, nor the second, nor the manner that we will pass from this life to the next. That we'll pass from time to eternity. That we'll pass to be judged by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who will come to judge the living and the dead. So one, one idea on how we have to be vigilant against the attacks of the devil, and then second would be, how can we be vigilant, alert, and ready when the Lord calls us from this life to the next, to be judged? With regard to being alert and vigilant, against the attack of the enemy. We have three basic enemies, and they would be the devil, the flesh, and the world. That's right. We have three basic enemies. The devil, the flesh, and the world. Let's talk briefly about the devil, the flesh, and the world. The devil is the father of lies and a murderer from the beginning. The flesh does not want to obey the spirit, and the world wants to trick us into believing that we can attain per perfect happiness in this world. But let's talk about the tactics of the enemy, the devil. St. Thomas Aquinas calls the devil the tempter. Augustine calls him an angry dog on a leash. St. Ignatius calls him the enemy of our human nature. What I'm going to say, I've said before, but I think this is worthy of repeating. When you find yourself in a state of desolation, where there's a lack of faith and hope and charity, you feel sad and somewhat depressed, disoriented, you feel drawn to lower things, there's no interior peace. We all go through states of desolation. In that state, we have to be vigilant. We have to be alert. We have to be wide awake. Because that's the time, my friends, in which the devil will attack us, undoubtedly. And the devil will often attack us as St. Ignatius says in Rule 14, by circling us and seeing where there's an opening. I like to call it our kryptonite, our weak point. That's the way the devil works. And then St. Ignatius in Rule 6, he gives us the remedy. He says, when we find ourselves in that state of soul that we call desolation, we should pray all the more. We should meditate. We should apply ourselves to some suitable penance. And finally, we should examine our conscience, then exercise patience, trusting that God, who has allowed us to be in desolation, he can pull us out of desolation instantaneously. So that's our tactic when we find ourselves in the state of desolation. Let's move now. To the second interpretation of be, be vigilant, be alert, be awake. And this would be being prepared 
for the the day, the hour, the minute that God will call us from this life to the next. My first assignment was in Argentina. My superior sent me to Buenos Aires. I was there for three years. There was an elderly woman catechist in her 80s, very holy woman. Her name was Ramona, and she had a sister that was a Salesian nun. And I remember she helped me on some of the Spanish sayings. And one thing that she said that stuck with me, I'll say it in Spanish and in English. When she's talking about death, she would say, she said, Padre Eduardo, la muerte es lo más cierto, pero es lo más incierto. No es cierto. How was that translated? She said, death is the most certain thing, but it's also the most uncertain thing. How true. It's the most certain thing in this sense, that there's no person living right now that will avoid the reality of death. Jesus says in the gospel today, he'll come like a thief in the night. Like a thief in the night. We don't know the day, nor the hour, nor the manner. But it's absolutely certain that none of us will escape, will escape death. None of us physically are immortal. Rather, we all have our own mortality. We all have our, our moment that we're going to be passing from this life to the next. But we must be prepared. We must be prepared. So I'd like to give you some guidelines on how we can Live out the gospel today. Be ready. Be vigilant. And be prepared because we don't know the day nor the hour. Okay, the first guideline or suggestion that I would give to all of us, myself included, is... To live, to, to live, my friends, every day of our life. Live every day of our life if, as if it were the last day of our life. That's good advice. And it could be. And it could be. We don't know the day nor the hour. And as the great woman doctor of the church, St. Catherine of Siena, who died when she was only 33 years of age, St. Catherine of Siena said, the most important moment in our life is now and at the hour of our death. So live each day of your life on earth as if it were your last. Second suggestion. Now I'm quoting St. Teresa of Avila, the two women doctors of the church. St. Teresa of Avila says this, 
often we commit sin because we become oblivious or we forget about the presence of God. My friends, let's try. Make a really concerted effort starting today to live in the presence of God. There, there was a book written by a humble lay brother. His name was Brother Lawrence. In the essence of his spirituality, he lived a very holy life, but Brother Lawrence tried to live out what we're talking about, to live in the presence of God every moment. If you like, St. Paul quotes one of the Greek poets in the Acts of the Apostles. St. Paul says, in, in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live, we move and have our being. If you like one of, the, one of the Psalms, I think it's Psalm 139, that speaks about the omnipresence of God, that God is everywhere. The Psalmist says, if I ascend the heights of the mountains, you are present there. If I plumb the depths of the sea, you're present there. Even in the darkest moments of night, you're there looking at me as if it were the sun beaming down at midday. Beautiful song. So by living in the presence of God, striving to live in the presence of God, Recognize that God's loving eyes are focused upon us in every moment. We can at least implicitly and directly be preparing ourselves by being vigilant for that day, the hour, the moment that, that God will be calling us. Next suggestion, my friends, we're talking about the gospel today where Jesus says, stay awake, be vigilant. We know neither the day nor the hour, and he will come like a thief in the night. Is we should try to avoid in our lives, avoid Mortal enemy number one. When I say mortal enemy number one, I mean this. Our principal and chief enemy, my friends, is the reality of sin. There was a comedian back in the 60s, his name was Flip Wilson. And Flip Wilson was famous for this saying. He would say, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. Theologically, Flip Wilson is not totally correct because the devil tempts us he tries to seduce us he tries to allure us into committing sin but all of us are free individuals we're endowed with the gift of free will so the devil really cannot force us to do anything. We have to choose it. So let's make a concerted effort, my friends, in our lives, 
even though we're born as sinners, we live as sinners, we die as sinners, let's make a concerted effort to, with God's grace, to try to avoid sin. And it's true that sin is mortal enemy number one. Sin is mortal enemy number one. And by now all of us, all of us doing the spiritual exercises, meditating upon the capital sins, we, we all know by now what is our, our major weakness. We all know, I think, what our principal chief capital sin is. We probably have a major than a minor. By having that self-knowledge, as the Desert Fathers say, know thyself. Know thyself. That by knowing ourselves, by knowing our kryptonite, by knowing our weakness, then we can try to prevent that sin. The book of Revelation, or Apocalypse, makes reference to what is called the second death. How do we interpret the second death? Well, morally speaking, morally speaking, when we commit a mortal sin, that's the spiritual death of our soul. That can be considered the first death. The second death, my friends, would be to be actually to die in the state of mortal sin. And if we die in the state of mortal sin, then we lose our soul for all eternity. And that is the greatest tragedy that could befall any of us. My friends, we're talking today about the gospel in which Jesus invites us to stay awake and to be vigilant because we don't know the day nor the hour. He will come like a thief in the night. And I'm giving, I'm giving you all practical guidelines on how we can live out this gospel for today. Not to be taken by surprise. As we mentioned, the sentinel who is a soldier on guard, always on the lookout for the approaching enemy. The next suggestion is the following. Due to human weakness, as Jesus says, the stay away, Jesus says in the garden related to the cop, the topic today, Jesus says, stay awake and pray. It's the same thing as being vigilant. Stay awake and pray. And then Jesus goes on to say, because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Stay awake and pray. We know neither the day nor the hour because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But given that we are weak, and St. Paul also, in one of his letters says, speaks about the interior struggle that he himself had. This is the great St. Paul, St. Paul the Apostle. St. Paul says, this, the good I know I should do intellectually. The good I know I should do intellectually end up by doing the exact opposite. Who will save me from this mortal body? Thanks be to God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the words of St. Paul. 
That being the case, if we do fall, because we are weak, only God is perfect. We should live out what Venerable Father Bruno Lanteri says. And that is what is called the Nunc Cepi. Those are words in Latin. Venerable Father Bruno Lanteri. Nunc Cepi, which means, Now I will begin. Now I will begin. Now what my founder is saying is this. We are weak. We're all prone to fall. We all have this proclivity to give in to our weaker, lower human nature. That's true. But when we do fall, we can do one of two things. We, we fall, we can decide not to get up. We can allow ourselves to sink in the mud or to descend in the moral quicksand. We can decide not to get up, to throw in the towel, to give in to discouragement, to give in to despair. We can, we can choose that but that's the wrong choice. That's the wrong choice. When we do fall, we should make a concerted effort to bounce back, to be resilient, to return to the Lord with all of our hearts. I like to give the analogy. Two different physical objects. What are you when we fall? Are you going to be like Play Doh? Or are you going to be like a Super Bowl? Remember, as a little kid playing with Play Doh. Plop like clay. Then I remember as a, as a child getting a Super Bowl, being able to bounce that Super Bowl even over a roof. It was very resilient. Are we Play-Doh or are we a Super Bowl? The Play-Doh mentality is to give in to discouragement and to despair, and we don't get up. Imagine a football player that's tackled by his opponent. Is he going to stay down in the mud the rest of the game? Of course not. So we should be not like the Plato, and I'm not talking about the philosopher, but rather about the clay, the Plato. We don't want to be Plato, but we want to be like a new Super Bowl. We fall. Then the new Chepi. And we bounce higher. We live out, my friends, we live out Luke chapter 15. The parable, my friends, the beautiful parables. Luke chapter 15 we'd like to call the lost and found chapter in the words of Father Al Hall, Able. Luke 15 is the lost and found chapter. It's the coin that's lost and found. It's the sheep that's lost and found. It's the son, the prodigal son that's lost and found. We should be living out Luke chapter 15 and return to the loving embrace of our Heavenly Father with all of our hearts. Never forgetting that God 
is slow to anger and rich in mercy and forgiveness. And as St. Paul says in Romans chapter 5, where sin abounds, the mercy of God abounds all the more. And the Father Tim Gallagher would teach that God's mercy is so great that he forgives in a heartbeat. He forgives in a heartbeat. Now, my friends, we're talking about the gospel for today in which the Lord is challenging us to be vigilant, to be ready, because he will come like a thief in the night. Then another suggestion I like, another suggestion I like is it, to attain The grace of all graces, according to the words of St. Alphonsus Liguori, the grace of all graces, the grace of all graces is to die in the state of grace. Is to love my friends, to have a great love, trust, and confidence in the Blessed Virgin Mary. To have a great love, trust, confidence, entrustment to the Blessed Virgin Mary. This Saturday is the first Saturday of the month dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Tomorrow is the first Friday of the month of September. And how do we do that, my friends? Our Lady wants this. Our Lady wants this. She appeared in Fatima, Portugal. The World Day of Youth was in, in Lisbon, not too far from Fatima, Portugal. And Our Lady appeared six times to Jacinta, Francisco, and Lucia, talking about this topic of being prepared and be vigilant. Mary talking about the last things. Every one of the appearances from May 13th all the way up until October 13th Our Lady said pray the rosary pray the rosary for world peace Pray the rosary for the conversion of sinners. Pray and offer up sacrifices. Many souls are lost because there are not sufficient prayers as well as sacrifices. So my friends, the primary purpose of our life is to be vigilant, to be prayerful, to be alert, to be on guard. Because we know neither the day nor the hour. It will come like a thief in the night. So let's, my friends, let's, uh, Padre Pio called it, where is my weapon? Let's wield our weapon. This is our spiritual weapon. And pray the rosary. Pray the rosary in our family. Try to promote the praying of the Most Holy Rosary. Because every time we say the Hail Mary, 
finishing up our talk on vigilance, that we be prepared to meet the Lord. We say at the end of every Hail Mary, pray for us. Pray for us, Mary. Pray for us now and at the hour of our death. So let's pray for each other, my friends, that we would have a holy and happy death. So we would be ready to meet the Lord when he calls and knocks on the door of our hearts. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.